I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Nissan Sentra SR manual with no launch control. <laughs> okay, so there's obviously a rev hang. Okay, horsepower and torque. 149 horsepower, 146 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter four-cylinder with no turbo. Okay, we previously drove the Sentra with the CVT. Yes, we did. We overall liked the car, but uh, weren't having as much fun and it felt slower. This does not feel slow at all with the manual transmission. This is so much better with the manual transmission. It's so much fun. It feels like a different car. It 100% it does, and I really enjoy driving this, but let's start with that rev hang thing you talked about. Okay, so what I noticed that happens in this car, and this is happening in a lot of cars lately because of emissions, is that they actually have to manually keep the throttle open even though your foot is off the gas. So it actually adds a little bit more gas so that it burns off whatever's in the combustion chamber, which no longer becomes emissions. So basically what happens is, even though you clutch in, you don't press the gas, the RPMs are still rising for a little bit, and then you have to wait for about two seconds to match your shift perfectly. Yeah, it's very meant for slow shifting, but for trying to go fast and everything, it's kind of, you're gonna have to like beat it up. Exactly, or the alternative is to kind of just slip the clutch between shifts, which is gonna prematurely wear out your clutch. Now I'm gonna do a pull where I don't let the rev hang chill. Okay. Just bang gears. So you can do it, but we just kind of shake a lot in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. which, which is just like the opposite of a commuter car kind of thing. This is a commuter car version. It's not snappy and quick like a Type R. Yes. Now downshift and do the same thing, but rev match for the two seconds so that it's a smooth shift. That still wasn't enough. <laughs> exactly. So that's the thing. It is cool. I really appreciate the fact that they do have the manual and new for 2021 is having it in this SR trim because previously last year they've already made changes because it was only available in the base model. Okay. And Nissan is a surprisingly very cool company in Canada because they are going to have a Sentra Cup with race car versions of this. Yeah. And this is the exact same powertrain that's in the Cup cars, which they previously started with the Nissan Micro, which no longer exists. So now it's the Sentra Cup. Yeah. But you can uh, also race micras against the centros and i think they're in their own class though with the micras all they did was add brakes because they just needed to make sure they stop on yeah. the racetrack. So basically there's rear brakes from an upper trim. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's a lot of different changes. It's it's a full-blown race car yeah. that you're buying and I do have the Canadian price for the full-blown race car. Hit me with it. It is $39,990. But I guess you have to pay a lot more to go to every race for the full year and have them have the, all the cars ready for you. Yes. Get, okay. But we are going to get to go test that out later this year. Yes, hopefully. So you're going to see us in some of these race cars. I'm very excited because I feel good about everything here, driving this and shifting it, except for one thing with the pedal placement, is that when you heel toe downshift, you gotta stick your ankle out like that, whatever, that's all good. But my right part of my ankle would rub against the plastic part. Oh, is this why this is sitting on my passenger seat underneath my legs over here? Yeah, so I pulled this panel off and now I have enough room to heel toe downshift. It's perfect and I assume the race cars are gonna have that removed as well. So yeah. I feel like that is not cheating, that is fair <laughs> and it's not really covering up anything important. So if you do have one of these and you can't heel toe downshift, pull that panel off. And technically it's not a weight reduction, so it would still qualify for racing because if you keep it in the car. <laughs> There's like no tear in the race cars. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do have the same problem with pedal placement because I feel like all the pedals are shifted to the right, so my heel kind of hits it and I can't do the roll that I'd like to do, so I kind of have to do like an actual almost heel toe. Yeah, full twist, never roll. So enough of me talking about that. Let's talk about the looks very briefly. Okay, so it does look really good as we really liked the one that we drove last year. And this black roof. Yes, so this two-tone paint is actually new for 2021. I really like the looks of this. I think this looks better than a current gen Civic, base Civic, but Civic's getting refreshed, so. Yeah. But I think this looks better than a uh, current gen Corolla as well. Uh, Corolla is a good looking car, but yeah, and I, I, feel, I guess. And I feel like when we drove the manual transmission Corolla, this was, 
more fun. I think I like this shifting better. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to compare because we drove that so long. Like, yeah, ago. yeah. It's, it's actually been a year. But I feel like I remember that being so soft. Yes. That like you couldn't know, didn't really know what was going on, and this is just more normal old school manual transmission. Oh, this is way more old school because this also doesn't have any rev matching. You got to do it yourself. All right, ready? In the Carbola. You ready for it? That's good. Okay, you can't, <laughs> you can't go past red line. No. <laughs> okay, and then the side view, we got some pretty good body lines. Nothing spectacular but it's very, very good, and this paint does pop a lot. It does look really good with this two-tone roof, like I said, especially from the side. Oh man, I kinda wish it was orange, burnt orange paint. Oh, hey, do you though? Nissan owns that, it's okay, <laughs> I like that. And then we've got black wheels on this, and I think generally everybody hates black wheels, but I no, really- No, they don't. I hear a lot of people complaining about black wheels, but I really like these type of black wheels on this exact car. The only reason I complained about them in the past, because I've already previously owned cars with black wheels in the winter, is that they get really dirty and it's impossible to keep them clean in the winter. But this five spoke is such a nice clean design that it works so well on this car. And then what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Sentra? The Viking Contact 7. And then moving on to the back end, same old Sentra. It doesn't have really crazy LEDs at the back and at the front, it's just kind of normal lights. Yeah, overall the headlights and taillights could be improved, the DRLs. And then how about exhaust tips? We have one single exhaust and it is real. What does it sound like from the... Dude, does anyone really want... Oh, what does it sound like from the outside? <laughs> okay, but you know what? I bet you the race cars are gonna sound way, way sicker. 100%, I'm so excited for the race cars. Like actually, I wish we could afford to go race. Yeah. But I think with uh, both of us having kids coming this summer, yeah. it's a, not a good idea. <laughs> no, not, not a good time to enter the uh, <laughs> hey, Centra hey Cup. Hey wife, is it cool if I just go race cars for the first time ever yeah. with a newborn? <laughs> exactly, I'll bring the newborn to the track, except okay. you have to take care of them. Little boot through cliche, and then it's your turn to drive. Okay. And it is wet, we are on winters. It's pretty good. This is a little dry part. Oh, okay. You have traction on. No, I have it off. Oh, okay. So it's slid out a bit. I think it's all because of the temperature right now, but it feels good until the weather gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I, I have no issues with this handling. It's actually pretty good. So I guess we covered looks compared to the Civic and the Corolla, a bunch of manual transmission stuff. I know you're gonna wanna talk about it a lot because that's the coolest part of this car. So let's get you behind the driver's seat to- Clutch gas! Launch this car! Clutch gas! Dump clutch! <laughs> wow, that was a fast downshift. Lightning bro, oh god. <laughs> you can't lightning shift this. Yeah, you can. Well, you should. It's just gonna bounce. That's race. That's what the race car drivers are gonna do. Oh yeah, with like solid motor mounts and stuff. Do you want me to install this panel or not? God, no. Okay, ready? Oh, that's when you shift a little too quick. Yeah. That felt all right. Exactly, because I fascist. waited a little bit. Yeah, so you just, you gotta wait between shifts, otherwise you're probably gonna ruin your entire powertrain, or at least all the motor mounts and transmission mounts. All right, hit me with a downshift and rip it. Okay, downshift one, downshift two. Dude, this is so much more fun than that stupid CVT. Like, so much more fun. I, like, s small cars with manual transmissions yes. is so enjoyable. My Civic, so friggin' slow. Manual transmission makes it amazing. And this zero to 60 miles per hour is actually faster than your Civic, and the quarter mile time is actually faster than your Civic. Yeah, well, look at all these parts <laughs> I'm getting for my Civic. So guess what? My Civic's gonna be faster than a Mustang. Yo, shout out Holly, shout out Nas. Ooh, should we give the people an update on my Mustang? It's orange. Shout out Carstar Eglinton, Carstar Scarborough Northeast for painting my Fox body molten orange to match my Raptor. And now they're working on my Civic right now, but I'm not repainting that because the art is already perfect. But Yuri, we actually have a discount for everyone. 15% oh. off for anyone that mentions us at Carstar Scarborough Northeast or Carstar Eglinton, only those two locations. Yeah, there's actually a straight pipes discount. So if you need to get normal stuff fixed on your normal car, that's their specialty. Not, Body work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> air full brush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to those guys. They did a fantastic job. Yeah, the paint looks like forbidden fruit. <laughs> like I just want to eat it like a lollipop on that Mustang. Oh, dude, it's so good. It's juicy. Okay, what were we talking about? I actually don't remember. 
think. Back to this transmission. It's a six speed and we do have a reverse ring and reverse is up and left. Yeah, and what's cool about the reverse ring is, is it doesn't get in the way like it does on a lot of Hyundais. Yeah, exactly. And the actual shifting experience is so nice and loose. Everything is just like, it goes into place. There's nothing that you have to like force into anything. It's nice, it's just easy. And the clutch is also really light. So for commuting, this would all be very good. Very good combo for commuting. And on top of all that cool stuff, we have a manual e-brake. So in the snow today, I was having fun cranking that thing and getting a little bit of slide. Yo, cranking that thing is pretty fun. <laughs> and it doesn't bog down that whole, oh, you're cranking as in. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously it's fun. <laughs> Everybody's doing it. So in preparation for the Centra Cup, give me a hard break into Cliche Corner. Okay, really? And, and I want to see how much you like the heel toe down shift. Okay, so at a moderate level of pace and okay yeah i could do it it's totally fine <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great as long as you remove that panel because not having that panel really saves the shifting experience and this also has nissan's intelligent trace control which is basically just brake torque vectoring i kind of feel it here and there like it wants to break one of the wheels because it wants you to have traction and i do feel like it's doing something and it handles okay but we'll probably really be able to tell what it can do as a cup car. <laughs> okay, the thing is, I don't know if that stuff's on or off with traction control. If you're a Nissan engineer, hit me up on LinkedIn, Yuri Tershin, tell me all about it. But to turn off the traction, tell me about the adventure you have to go through. Follow me on the straight pipes on Instagram first. And then follow me on Yuri Tershin on the Instagram as well. I have a verification badge. So do I. Wow, we're popular. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the journey you had to do to turn off traction control. Oh, God. So I got to do it through the infotainment. Well, sorry, my gauge cluster. So I have to manipulate my left thumb wheel to be able to go into VDC settings. So that's actually a big frustration that is easily solvable with a hard button. Unfortunately, this doesn't have it. I'm interested to see if they're going to have the cup cars have the permanently off or if you have to do that in the infotainment. Because what if the race starts and you have to do that? I'm pretty sure it's permanently off. We, we won't know until we go, but we are excited to go. Yes, very excited. Because I like this thing. This is a very good package. Let's talk about the actual suspension and ride quality because that is one of the things that stands out the most for me in this car. It is one of the most comfortable cars to drive in this class. I think the suspension is very well calibrated. I think it's more comfortable than a Civic. But are our minds being tricked by these very comfortable space seats? Potentially, because that's also very comfortably holding my butt in because these are Nissan space seats. Yeah, Nissan seats are like, I think I've been talking about that in a lot of luxury cars. Like even the GLA35, I was saying how much more comfortable oh, yeah. these seats would be. And I don't change my mind on that one bit. Yeah, no, these seats are fantastic. And even in cloth, like it doesn't matter. They're so comfortable. I didn't realize, yeah. And then we also have a ton of room back there, especially for myself at six foot one and a half. But what about sitting in the front seat? You parked and you want to leave the car. <sighs> okay, so if the car is running, you can't actually get out. So right now, I can't. So if I was parked, it would do the same thing. So I actually have to unlock my own door to get out yeah, while it's running. Most cars let you just pull the handle and it'll unlock no matter what. Yeah, so that's a frustration and we couldn't find how to turn that off in the infotainment. So I think it's just a Nissan thing because we have had other Nissans do that in the past as well. Yeah, um, I would say pretty, pretty decent annoyance. Yeah, it's not like a deal breaker or anything like that. But for us filming, constantly getting in and out of the car, we notice like dumb things like that. But I wonder what the ratio of non-filming people is to like, how many times do you get out of your car while it's running? Exactly. Like, like, I mean, I do that because like, if I have to run back in my house and my car is running and I forget something, like I've done that in other cars many times. Yeah, I just feel like it's not that common. I don't know. Let us know in the Let comments. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> and as for the rest of this interior, it is pretty nice. We got some orange stitching, which makes it look good. Everything is very intuitive on the infotainment. We've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And those are both standard for 2021. We got USB and USB-C, which is a nice thing. And, and aux. Yeah, yeah. Not that you can aux into anything. I guess if you have your old iPod with all your old songs, why not keep it going, right? I guess so. And then we do have Sirius XM satellite radio and it does rewind, which is very nice, but you do have to click a replay button to get to that part. And we do have a very good volume knob and tuning knob, which is nice. And then we do have a lot of hard buttons for stuff but we don't have a hard button for Apple CarPlay, but it almost always shows up at the bottom. But what sucks about this screen is that it's almost always too dark. Yes, yeah, so we've had this problem in other Nissans as well. It's just too dim. Even when you maximize the brightness, it's just too dim. Yeah, and I notice it the most in the reverse camera because I've got everything cranked full brightness and everything else is fine. Reverse is just a little dull, but reverse camera is very clear. Exactly. And as for the rest of this interior, we do have hard buttons. We do have a pretty good layout in here. We do have a cup holder. Yuri, does it pass a small or medium cup of coffee? 
Yeah, it does. And it's surrounded by carbon fiber, which we also have on the door panels. Carbon fiber inspired. Carbon fiber inspired print and on the gauge cluster area. I mean, they are making a race car out yeah, of this. Exactly. So that is a fully allowed thing to do. I wonder how the race car is going to do in the visor test. Ugh. Three, two, one. Yes. Okay, the race car will for sure pass. It better. Unless it doesn't have visors. That's, but I mean, that's a supercar pass. If it has the thing, yeah. Or super, a race car pass. Supercar Sentra. That's, we're going to have to do a race car pass. I'm okay with that. Okay, and then we have heated seats, heated steering wheel, and it is hard buttons, which is nice. And this steering wheel does get very hot. All the way around, as I criticize Subarus for not doing that. Okay. Here's a smooth shift. There. It, it, it would take like four seconds to get to the actual point. I know. And to end off the interior, I do really like the sound system in this. It's very punchy for a lower trim car. And to actually end off the interior, sitting behind myself at six foot one and a half is very comfortable back there. I feel like you already mentioned that there's a lot of room back there. Not in this review, Yuri. I told you we already mentioned it. Fuck. Is that the last one? Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, there's a lot of room back there for sure. Yeah. So now we should get to the price. This one is a whopping $23,383 with this optional paint. Canadian. And when I say whopping, that is a whopping good deal. It's a really fun car for that price in manual. Yes. Especially if you have a daily commute that sucks, manual will make it a lot more fun, unless it's like pure stop and go traffic. But even then, this clutch is so light, the shifter is so light that I actually wouldn't be bothered by it at all in this car. You would have fun passing cars from lane to lane Yes. on your commute, even though no one's driving anywhere right now. Well, actually, everyone's still driving everywhere. No one's really staying home. <laughs> well, yeah. And on your commute, you also have adaptive cruise, which is nice. Yeah, and like lane departure assist stuff. Yes. Okay, so this Civic Corolla base-ish in manual. I don't know. That's hard to say. They're all very close. They all have their pluses and their minuses. I don't know. I'm not really the biggest fan of all the Corolla infotainment stuff, and the Civic is old and getting refreshed, so I think technically this would be better at this moment right now. I think Civic because it definitely had a better powertrain. I preferred shifting in that. It had more power. It's, it's got a turbo engine. But they're I, not having a race car series out of it. No, I know. But you can get a Civic in a hatch well, and a Corolla in a hatch. They do have race car series with the Type R in the United States. Yeah, but not the base ones. No, I know. So let us know what you think of this Sentra with the manual transmission. Would you take it over a base-ish Civic with a manual transmission or a base-ish Corolla with a manual transmission? I can tell you I would take this over any CVT any day. So good. And watch some of these videos over here, which is a bunch of playlists of a bunch more cars, including this one with a CVT. I'm going to slow down. And the Micra. Yes. Micra was good. Let's test the brakes. Ha, 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 ha.